What's up everybody? In this video we are going to learn how to translate imperfect active verbs. The paradigm for these verbs is found in the third column of our Greek chart. So, let's begin. So let's talk about uh, the imperfect tense and what it means. So the imperfect expresses the incomplete or ongoing action in the past. For example, if this is our reference point, so this is now, at a certain point in the past there will be an ongoing or incomplete action, which we should translate as I was working, I was sleeping, I was preaching. So it's always continuous. In fact, the imperfect tense in Greek is equivalent to the past continuous in English. The distinctive characteristic of the imperfect active indicative uh, tense is uh, the augment epsilon, which uh, symbolizes that the verb is in the past tense, and a specific personal endings, uh, which correspond to a certain person and number. So these endings must be memorized. So the first person singular we will translate I was losing, second person you were losing, third person he, she, it was losing, plural we were losing, you were losing, they were losing. You can notice that uh, the first person singular and the third person plural have identical forms. If the word is written by itself, stands on its own, you can translate it either I was losing or they were losing. But in the sentence or in the larger context, um, you will have no problems to distinguish which of this form is actually used. So in brief, if you see the augment and one of these endings, you know that your verb is imperfect, active, indicative, and you should translate it accordingly. One last thing is to see the distribution of the imperfect active verbs in the New Testament. As you can see, majority of them are of the third uh, person, so you are going to see the third person endings more often than any other ending, so this is where you need to focus. So now as we learned this, let's take a look at some examples. So here down below we have the endings for the imperfect active indicative verbs. Let's remember that there should be an augment um, preceding each and every verb. So now let's read the, the first example from Matthew 1.25. Kai uk eginosken auten. So kai means and uk stands for no, not or don't before the verbs and we have um, the verb here, ginosko, which I know from my vocabulary. So the verb ginosko means I know and it starts with gamma. So here clearly we see the augment epsilon before this word ginosko, so we know it's a past tense. And now we look at the ending n and we find this ending in the third person singular, meaning he or she. And uh, because we don't have a subject written in our sentence, we will take the subject out of this verb. And third person singular meaning he. From the context of uh, the story in Matthew 1, we know it's uh, Joseph. So, and he was not knowing how ten her. So, uh, the literal translation, and he was not knowing her. It doesn't sound right in English. Um, when we work with the verb to know in English, we better say, and he didn't know her. But uh, this is imperfect, so it should be translated, and he was not knowing her. And uh, to know uh, your wife means uh, it's a euphemism for to have intimacy with her. And so here we can say, and he was not having intimacy with her, or he was not sleeping with her. The second example from Matthew chapter 9, Kai hoi farisaioi elegon tois matetais autu. So Kai and hoi farisaioi, this is our subject, and the Pharisees, elegon. Elegon again from our vocabulary, lego, I speak, we see the augment before the word lego, right? This is our stem and this is the ending. So this is um, uh, the augment and then we look 
at the ending on and we find it either third person plural or the first person singular. So here we know for sure that this is the third person plural because our subject is also plural and we know that the subject and the verb always agree in number. So this is the third person plural and the Pharisees were speaking tois matetais autu with his disciples or they were and the Pharisees were speaking to his disciples. Another beautiful example is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 4 kai edidasken autus en parabolais. So kai means and edidasken from didasko I teach we see the augment right there now we check the ending and we find it in the third person singular, he or she. And from the context of the story, we know that this is Jesus, so he. Now we need to translate it continuously. And he was teaching autus, them, and parabolize in parables. All right. So another example from the Gospel of John. Uk episteon eis auton. So here from the verb pisteo, I believe. So we see the augment again. Now we check the ending and we find it in the third person um, plural, they. And uh, this is from the context. Uh, we know that people, they, uh, they were not believing in him. If you enjoyed this video so far, please like it and comment below because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. So, let's continue. Another beautiful example is from the book of uh, Galatians. Let's read Kai edoxadzon and emoi ton theon. So Kai means and, and here we have our verb from doxadzo, I glorify. We clearly see the augment. And now we check these endings on. Again, we find it in the first person singular or third person plural. So it could be either I was glorifying or they were glorifying. Now we see a prepositional phrase in me or in myself. And then Tontheon God. So I was glorifying God in myself or they were glorifying God in me. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you to learn, please like it, comment below and subscribe to receive more videos like this. And of course there's much more about the imperfect active verbs which I could cover in this video. If you want to learn more, please consider enrolling into my video course of the beginning Greek grammar, where I take my students from the alphabet to all the way to working with the Greek New Testament. And remember, we're not just learning Greek grammar, we are getting closer to God. So I wish you all the best, learn Greek, love God, I'll see you in the next video.